that he was actually an informant, the first thing, you know, all the people who were talking about it back then said was, well, damn it. You know, some people actually said this and no one believed. And uh, the next thing that everyone said was, well, this came out on Fox News, so it can't be true. Um, it took us a few hours to actually believe it because we waited for NPR and all these other places to actually report and, and swear up and down that they had sources of their own. And uh, at that point, then people started to believe and started to go back uh, through their chat history. What did I say to this man over the last four months? Am I in trouble? Does right? he know my name? Yeah. You know, that was an interesting day on IRC watching them all do that. As an observer of Anonymous over the last year, um, and I, I have talked to uh, Sabu a number of times on IRC and once even on the phone. Um, he, uh, the most controversial aspects of what he brought, and I'm talking about the discussion within Anonymous, the controversy, well, I guess every, everybody else too, the, the, <laughs> the two, fall into two categories. Let what you just alluded to, that large scale doxing of personal information of members of the public that may not be a part of the, uh, the confrontation or mm -hmm. maybe innocent bystanders. I have talked to a lot of people who identify as anonymous who say we, anything we do needs to minimize that, right? Minimize the releasing yeah, of Minimize the effect on the actual public. In and the end, yet, you want to win them over to your side, not exactly. convince them that you're evil. And the idea is not to hurt people that, you know, innocence. The, uh, some people feel very, very, very strongly about that. And yet, Sabu, uh, clearly didn't feel that way. It's uh, interesting having that conversation yeah. with him specifically, and even back when Kayla was around and all of them, you know, I, I sat in the middle of a conversation they had about this, and they justified it to themselves by saying that no matter how many times you go to these people and you explain that giving this information to this website means the bad hackers, the people who are going to use it for identity theft, the people who are going to take your credit card and defraud you, yeah. they already have it. If we got in, this is their argument, then someone else beat us to it already and we're just proving the point that we got in. And telling you that, we get ignored. Telling the press that, no one wants to hear it, they don't print it. So we have to dump your data or you're not going to believe that it's already out there before we dumped it. Yeah, that's the and argument. That, that was the argument yeah. that they gave and it's a tough one to argue with when you hear it. They're, they're very convincing. Uh, but that's again why I'm on the fence. Uh, you know, I, I don't necessarily agree with it, but I understand that you know, getting the news to cover the fact that this site that has everyone's credit card isn't secure and we can prove it doesn't work until you prove it. That's a hacker ethos that kind of goes back pre-anonymous, I think. It goes back pretty far. Yeah. The other thing I want to get to quickly, and then I want to ask Anon, <clears throat> you know, there are people that feel very, very, very strongly. It's, it's hard to, it, just, this, is a, this is a freedom of speech group, and they, and they believe you know, attacking the press is wrong. We're a freedom of speech group. That's total hypocrisy. And again, uh, Sabu and Lalsec had no problem. I mean, uh, uh, full disclosure, I've done a couple, made a couple front lines myself as a documentary filmmaker, yep. and they attacked, uh, they attacked Frontline for a, a, a the story Tupac, that they that did. That Tupac story was hilarious, though. And, well, that's the thing. It's, uh, it, it's hard. It's, it is hilarious. <laughs> it, it, it's hard to the, the, Just so what people did. know, if you don't know what that story is, they, uh, Frontline did a story about Bradley Manning, um, and uh, LulzSec members of LulzSec, other members of Anonymous, were upset at the, uh, the my interpretation is the interpretation, the psycho psychologizing of Bradley Manning instead of focusing more on what he did and uh, what the documents meant and all of that. Um, so LulzSec took down the McNeil Lair News Hour, actually just posted an, a new news story in the McNeil Lair News Hour. Uh, of their own that, that uh, announced that Tupac and Biggie uh, were actually, in fact, alive and residing in New Zealand. So, <laughs> and it looked, it was just straight up news hour. It looked uh, real. It, it, it looked real. Job. Yeah, it was, it was genuinely funny. But that's, that's the other thing, attacking the press. You know, whenever that comes up on IRC, whenever you're watching any of the ops form, and especially when the press says something bad about Anonymous, there will be someone in the channels who says very clearly, we should attack that person. There, there's always that idiot, and, and I do refer to him as that idiot, because I think it's the dumbest thing we could possibly do. I think uh, Anonymous should not be attacking the press. Uh, again, you know, if, if I ever agreed with that, I would have to start to reconsider my thoughts on free speech. You know, uh, my ideology would completely have to flip for me to agree with this. And it, the surprising response is, shut up, get out of here, kick banning, being kicked off the servers. I mean, really, people who say that get treated wrong. And, yeah. and it's kind of one of the explanations for where LulzSec kind of appeared. You know, they split off and did all of that stuff and then kind of disappeared and slowly came back in. And after uh, the few members of them that really started the anti-sec movement were, you know, again, part of anti-sec, you'll notice that stuff stopped. 
you know, they tried to do all that stuff that most of us and most of the people, you know, like our friend on Skype here would not have agreed with under a different name. And I think that was on purpose. Um, I want to get your, your opinion on, on the events of last week, um, a non-9000. What, what do you, what is your, what's your take on, on how that went down and what it means and what it means? Well, I think it's interesting that Sabu, um, I, I, I feel like his uh, rhetoric was amped up after he reappeared from being arrested. Um, he was more provocative in, in speech and in action, I feel. Um, and there was even, you know, I heard a story that he um, offered to pay someone to do a hack for him, um, which I think raises interesting questions about um, how much input the FBI had on his actions um, and uh, what, what that means for the people who may be implicated um, along with him. Um, but to answer your question, I disagree. I disagree with um, attacking the press. I disagree with um, dumping um, people's data. I feel, you know, when I got into this, I, I felt like Anonymous was um, was a, a group of groups who, who fought for the for the users, you know, we fight for the users, um, and, and to see, and to see people, um, getting DDoSed and, um, censored wide scale by, you know, a few people, um, I, I, um, I'm, I'm with, uh, I'm, I'm with Greg, I'm on the fence about DDoS. I, I there's a, there's a pretty good, uh, argument that it's a form of censorship. DDoS, um, the denial of service attacks. Correct. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a tough one. It's a tough one to to really navigate through. I mean, we're we're not we're, we're not as rational as we think we are, but we are rationalizing. We like to rationalize our actions. <laughs> well, well put. Um, one more thought on just to play on what you just said on Sabu, and I, I want to move on. I'm realizing we don't actually have a lot of time. Um, the um, you're right. I do think his. Again, just observing this, he did, did seem like his uh, rhetoric amped up when he came back. He he left for a period of about a month. Uh, his Twitter, which is usually you know 20 tweets a day, um, uh, it, it was uh, it just went dark for a month and a half. And when he came back, it did seem amped up. And um, you do have a very strange situation where you have somebody who's instigating illegal activity uh, and working for the FBI. So I, I think there are issues of entrapment for those people that are, um, that are, uh, uh, that are, have been arrested last week in, in, in connection with some of these stuff, anti-sec members and other people that were working with Sabu. Um, not being a lawyer my, myself, I, I only know a couple things about this. I think you have, they have to prove inducement that he induced them for illegal acts. That seems pretty clear to me that yep. he was doing that. Um, but they also have to prove uh, predisposition, which, is, which means that the person committing that act uh, was not already predisposed to do it. In some cases, that might be more difficult. Uh, the the, issue, we have, the issue we have there is that I watched, and some of these people that did get arrested would not have done the hacks that they did for the simple reason that half of the ones arrested, he taught how to do them after he was already an FBI informant, then showed them targets that were available, and then they went and used what he taught them on the target that he pointed out under FBI, you know, uh, watch. And right. entrapment is one of the hardest things to prove. For every thousand cases that go, you know, before with the defense of entrapment, one is successful. I mean, it's, it's a very hard one to prove, even with evidence. So who knows how far that argument goes. Some lawyers won't even bring it because they know how hard it is to prove. But uh, most of these cases are, are interesting in that respect. The, the issue of Sabu brings up this kind of one of the uh, w sort of weaknesses of Anon, which is that anybody can do it, and it's, and it's prone to, to, uh, to agent provocateurs like him. Yeah, any, any, any one person can co-opt Anonymous and do something that will get press attention and just completely derail uh, a year's worth of um, you know, good hard work that Anonymous has done to fight censorship and corruption. Yeah. And you tweeted about this yesterday. Um, you denounced what happened yesterday, which almost seems to fall in the same category, which is um, somebody claiming to be anonymous. Um, they took down the British equivalent of Planned Parenthood. Um, they, you know, they, they defaced, the, they defaced the site, stole some, some information, I think, of, of women that were um, inquiring about information, nothing, uh, nothing inquiring about it. Uh, so 
which is a, a, a really ugly situation. And I, I know you came out yesterday and just said, this is ridiculous. Um, and, but, but people can do that. People can co-opt it for a day and make it and sort of right, pull those kind of stuff. Right, that's sort of an honest, right? You know, it can do good, but it can also do bad. And if any, any, anybody can claim to be anonymous and do anything they want um, for political reasons, however crazy they may be, and, and cite them to anonymous and then um, easily, um, you know, like you said, that could be a false flag option, you know, operation where, where someone wants to make anonymous look bad, so they do something like this. Yeah. It's easy to do. Anyone can do it. How did you get involved in anonymous, and what has your... You know, the, the, the issue of anonymous, I get asked this all the time, what, what was their role in Occupy? And I always think that it's a really kind of fascinating role, almost like a tech support kind of assistant, a kind of um, certainly megaphone. Uh, maybe you can speak to that a little bit. It, it's a little bit experience. like living in a science fiction novel right now that we have, you know, occupiers, it almost feels sometimes like we have this, this hacker army that, that is sort of our tech support. That's a great way to put it. Um, and I, I've... I've only in the last four months been interacting directly with Anonymous, but I've watched them for a long time. I was involved in the tech industry. Um, and it was really fascinating to me to see sort of this undirected nerd rage that would sort of be like, let's go attack this message board, let's go attack this website, suddenly sort of through Scientology and then Occupy become this, this directed force, at least partially, although we were just talking, of course, how sort of everyone's anonymous. Um, I, I, when I got involved with Occupy uh, is when I started directly interacting with them, uh, mostly via Twitter, uh, and I, I've made a number of anonymous contacts. My most uh, dramatic interaction with anonymous, I think, uh, came at the beginning of February. Uh, we'd had a full day of action at Occupy Austin, a day against, actually, the NDAA, which is a big target of anonymous. And we had a march, we had several marches, a big action, we all went home, and then we all got the phone call that we were about to be evicted from City Hall. And for those that don't know, uh, we held City Hall for almost four months, the steps, uh, continuously as occupiers. They gave us about half an hour's warning that we were going to be evicted. So, of course, we all bundle down there as fast as we can. And uh, we, we decide what we were going to do is something called the Portland Lap, which is an Occupy uh, tactic that was started in Portland, obviously, where when the police come to kick you out, uh, instead of staying and getting arrested, you literally pick up your tents, and start marching through the streets with them. And so we did that. We waited until the last moment. There were several arrests on the City Hall Plaza, but the bulk of us left and entered the streets. And we were marching through 6th Street and down here by the convention center, uh, over, I think, on the Red River side or by the 35 frontage road. And we were suddenly uh, ambushed by police while we were on the sidewalk. And one of our members who was being charged, um, they were basically framing him because he was wearing uh, a bandana on his face. Uh, they, they grabbed him, threw him down on the sidewalk, and were very roughly arresting him. And we surrounded and began chanting, shame, shame, as we often do, uh, to the police, who do you protect? Uh, at that point, uh, an officer jumped out and threatened us with a pepper spray can. Uh, he was maybe as close as you, maybe as Greg's distance, but he had his arm out, you know, so it was right up in our face. And he said, you know, I'm going to pepper spray all of you if you don't stop. And, you know, we, we saw his name. He hadn't covered his badge name number. And after they finished the arrest and backed off, I stepped forward out of the crowd. And I knew we had live streamers uh, with us who had a lot of viewers. And I said, Officer Jason Mistrick, and I read his badge number. I said, we have your name and number. It's on the internet. And Anonymous is going to dox you within hours. All your personal details will be everywhere within hours. <laughs> and they were. Yep. Um, and I mean, I felt like a superhero. Right. It was probably my greatest moment as an occupier. Um, that I could, I could step forward and that someone who had threatened us unreasonably, we were not being violent, we were not trying even to unarrest, as sometimes does happen. Um, we were just watching and calling them out on their behavior of arresting someone on a sidewalk. Um, and I was able to call on Anonymous and know that they would deliver. And it was a really powerful moment. Uh, and I think also for uh, the occupation, um, it helped us know that we had this backup, that we had Anonymous who had our back, who is watching us, who are legion, uh, and that all of us are Anonymous. Um, and within hours, we not only had his personal details, but we had information about some of his other crimes. Jason Mistrick has a history of harassing critical mass cyclists here and other poor behavior. Um, and so we knew about all of that. We were able to call him on it. Now we show up at uh, city hall meetings where he sometimes is security and talk to him or have signs of him holding the pepper spray can.